Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply. This video is to bring you a closer look at the best 1EE, -E -E, forgive me, 1EE, -E -E 7E4. They've got RP on here. My part number says C229RP3, um, left hand 613. They've got RP, ring package. I had asked for the RP3, which is three different rings. I'll show you the rings. I put the tail piece here as C229. We're going to inspect that to make sure that that's actually accurate um, for that cam part number. I think when I built that part number, I was less sure about the cam part number. Anyway, this is a, it's a cam lock at the end of the day. However, it's also a standard diameter of mortise cylinder. It's a 1 in 5 30 second mortise cylinder. Um, 32 threads uh, per inch, ultra fine threads per inch. Uh, it, this is called slabbed because they've taken and they've squared off both sides of the mortise cylinder. That would be what you would see in a metal filing cabinet application called a double D. If you did a double D prep, the letter D, if you put the letter D back to back, it's a double D. So you could take a um, slabbed or a double D prep lock like this, prep the face of your, your sheet metal cabinet and install a lock like this. The point is, is if you had a non-slabbed or flattened mortise cylinder, over time that mortise cylinder is going to turn. That slabbed prep prevents that turning because you'll make a double D prep. So this is basically just a standard mortise cylinder housing, except it's slabbed, okay, and it's lost motion. Lost motion is a fancy term that means, and we all deal with lost motion function probably every day, all of us probably every day. Lost motion means that when you turn the key, you can affect a change. You can throw the bolt. When you turn your key back, the bolt doesn't get dragged along back with it. Where we all use that every day is you come home, you've got a lock and a deadbolt, and you put your key in the deadbolt, you retract the deadbolt with your key. What's the next thing you do? Bring it back to vertical and pull the key out. Lost motion means that when you put the key in and retract the latch bolt, when you bring the key back to vertical, the deadbolt doesn't automatically move with it. That's lost motion. So, why this client wants to use lost motion um, is lost on me. Um, obviously, they want to be able to affect some sort of change with this um, where you can set the cam in any position and that would make sense meaning if I wanted to insert the key and move the tailpiece unlock the door move the key back pull it out leave the door unlocked then at the end of the day put the key in lock it bring the key back to vertical and pull it out locking it that's what they're using it for let's demonstrate that I have a generic core on my desk, uh, the control key is stuck into it, and I just want to study this function because this is actually the first time I, I'm seeing a slabbed mortise housing from Best Lost Motion. All of these concepts are standard concepts. I've just never seen it all together in a Best operating key. Okay, so this would be oriented as left hand, and. The handing of cabinet doors is just like the handing of safes. There are four ways to hand a door if you have a hollow metal door. Left hand, right hand, left hand reverse, right hand reverse. Let's not get into talking about left hand out versus right hand reverse. Don't care, doesn't matter. A safe door or a cabinet door that you would use this on, there's only two ways those swing. I would call it, because of my door background, left-hand reverse and right-hand reverse, because they always swing out. A safe door never swings in, right? Um, in the world of cabinet hardware, cabinet locks, they assume it swings out, period. When you look at the lock, and that uh, cam is going to the left, this can only be a left-hand door. It'll swing out like this, because when you are facing it, what side are the hinges on? They're on the left. Why do we know that? Well, because the cam is facing to the right. If it's going to lock something, it's going to lock over here. And when you unlock it, that door will swing out what I would call a left-hand reverse. 
they would call the safe industry or the cabinet industry would call that left hand. That's why this is LH in the um, in the uh, part number. So we have this funny lock. I'm gonna want to throw that. I've got it in the. Let's see here now. I've got the tailpiece out of out of um, timing. Okay, so there are two ways to put. Whenever you have a classroom lock or something like a lost motion, there's generally two ways to put the cylinder in, wrong and right. The first way I put it in was, was wrong, and I'll, I'll demonstrate that, because it'll mean if you get that operation, it's wrong. So right now, the, the cam is in the locked, or is in the horizontal position. I'm gonna put that key in, and I'm gonna turn it. I can turn it 360 degrees, I can pull the key out. Now I'm in the locked lower position, okay? Put the key in, rotate it 360 degrees the other way, kicks it up, pulls it out, locked in that position. That's what lost motion does. What I did earlier is I had the timing of the throw member inside of here 180 degrees out of alignment, which permitted the key to turn either way, but couldn't go past 180 to throw the bolt to lock the tailpiece in the opposite position. And I'm wondering if it's even worthwhile to put it together wrong, just to show you. I guess we will. Um, so if you're installed and it's loose like this, you put in an operating key. Not much security with that. Put in an operating key and turn the key. I can turn it 180 degrees either way from vertical. I can go 180 this way, but I can't pull it out. As soon as I bring it to vertical to pull it out, I'm unlocked. If I go counterclockwise, I can draw it up, but as soon as I bring my key back, it's unlocked again. So if that happens to you when you put this together and you've got a 50-50 chance of that happening, I just thought of a story um, and I'm gonna tell you really quick. That's the control lug on a small format. The control key pulls the control lug back. You need the control key in order to insert or to remove the core from the housing. I had a customer's installer on the phone. Customer, a uh, really great lady at a company out uh, on the West Coast, a contractor, and she'll buy $5,000, $10,000 of material at a time. They love their best locks, as do I. And the installer called me and said, hey, um, I want to make sure that I'm just, <laughs> he didn't have the control key, didn't know what it was. He says, I'm just calling to make sure that I'm supposed to get my hammer and hammer the cylinders into the core, the control lug is sticking out. And I says, no, don't do that at all. I says, do you have the control key? He says, what did you call me? Uh, I says, no, do you have the control key? What's that? It's what, it's what the control key is what pulls the, is what pulls the control lug back. That's what allows the core to go in and be pulled out. I says, don't do that. He says, he says, you know, I didn't think I was supposed to do that, but I, I thought for a minute maybe that's how that's supposed to go. So um, I explained what the control key was. I let him know where it was shipped to. He was able to retrieve it, and in five minutes he was uh, off to the races, so to speak. So the point, the, the moral of the story is, and I've got a, there's a YouTube video that I explain basically lost motion on deadbolt on YouTube and people will get their deadbolt put together and they can throw the bolt but every time they bring the key back the bolt unlocks and it's maddening all you need to do is to reverse the timing take this piece this way okay and just rotate it this way it's that simple just turn something 180 degrees and that's what just happened if the function of your lock doesn't work and it's a classroom type where you can leave it always this way and then with the via the key always leave it the opposite state it's a timing issue so just reverse whatever needs to be reversed in this case it's the throw member down there so let's finish off our review our visual review of what's included and my apologies my apologies to the late frank best and all of his errors this is just a clone that i have if it doesn't say best it's a clone if it's small format it is a copy frank best patented the small format core I think he filed in 1919 and was awarded the patent in 1921. The core that we use today isn't the one that's in that patent, but it's basically that one. It will come with a hex nut that's going to slide over. You'll get that onto there, and you're going to then, of course, 
you know what? I think you're going to need to, uh, yeah, you're going to need to remove the tailpiece. Um, at that point, speaking of this, that means you can change the hand in the field is what I'm going with. And if you were really determined, you could probably pull that pin out and stick it over here because that's a restricting pin. Very common in hotel cylinders as well um, in certain types of construction. And you can insert it on the other side if you wanted to reverse that hand, the handing of that. Okay. Um, so that can be done. You're going to need to remove it to get that because I can't get that enough to start threading that down. So hole is drilled, slabbed lock goes in, tailpiece is off. You probably need to get the tailpiece off to slide it through anyway. Tighten it down, put your tailpiece back, check for operation when you put the core in. That RP that they've got, they've got two trim rings. And by the way, this is 613, that's oil rub bronze. Very nice oil rub bronze they've given us. It's wet, it's oil rubbed. I mean, I've got, you can see the tip of my finger. That's what oil rubbed is supposed to do. A couple of different trim rings. I'm gonna measure the height of each. Three eighths, and this one's probably quarter inch, or maybe three sixteenths. Yeah, and three sixteenths. That's normal. You're going to have a couple of black spacers in here as well. Okay, two of them. You're probably only going to need one, or you may not need one at all. So this core has a seven in the part number. That means it'll accept up to a seven pin core. Best make seven pin and six pin. They also make five pin. If you're using a six pin system, insert one of these blocks, these spacers, down over the throw member. Line up the snake eyes with the two posts. If you're using a five pin, and you could, um, I was just in a eight week locksmithing class and one of the locksmiths in attendance at a major university, they have a five pin best, they have six pin best everywhere. I think they're phasing over the years to seven pin. And it's because you get four times the amount of potential change keys. You get a substantially large, well, if it's an A2 system, if it's an A4 system, I think you're gonna get five times the amount of uh, change keys. A much larger capacity in a seven pin versus a six pin. So they're phasing in seven pin, but they've got cabinet locks where they're all five pin. And the reason they're all five pin is because they don't want giant cylinders on their cabinets. And they've got basically, I would imagine, a standalone system in the overall keying schematic that just runs those administrative offices, cabinets, desk drawers, whatever it is that are on a five pin system. If you were doing that for some reason, you'd use both of these. Generally, when I see an order come in for best when it comes to these um, locks, I only see one spacer, but you can buy them as separate standalone products, a uh, bag of 100, and it's not unheard of for us to sell a bag of 100 of those. Let's switch to the screen view and let's take a closer look at all the supporting documentation. If you are enjoying this video, please click thumbs up or like, and also please consider subscribing to our channel. Let's move on to the rest of the video. Okay, here is our item. Let's take a look at some photographs that we have. There's the box itself. And uh, there is the components. Up close of the cylinder housing. Just different views of the item. Right side view, the back side. Left side, back side showing the tailpiece in, two, in both of its different orientations. Your accessories, a couple different perspectives on that. Okay, now we have a link to the cut sheet down below. Basically, it's just this one page and it shows us the slabbed. Cabinet mortise cylinder lost motion cam. The seven pin is inch and a quarter effective length. 
I don't really know what they're, well, yeah, I do know what they're, well, no, I don't know what they're driving at there. This is longer than inch and a quarter. This is inch and three-eighths. That may be a typo, because seven pin, the shortest you'll get in seven pin is inch and three-eighths. Uh, well, actually, no. I know what they are referring to. Forgive me. What they're referring to, and I, I will, provided I don't forget, I'll just quickly show you what they're referring to. Inch and a quarter, effective length. What they're referring to is this. There's your tailpiece. Okay, you get the concept. The dimension from here to the underside of the head, that's inch and a quarter. Effective length. You're going to add your trim rings. You're going to build that down. You're going to maybe even, you know, use one or use the other. Um, you're not going to realistically flip the cam over to have it go off that way, although I, I see how it is possible that you may be able to. There is a stop pin that's in there that you're going to need to contend with uh, by probably pushing it through the other side, um, but it, it, I believe it can be done. Um, I wouldn't encourage that to be done, but I would think in a pinch you could probably do that with success. Okay, that's what effective length means. Solid brass or bronze. The C229 cam, that's what it's going to come with. That's what it's shown with. That's obviously where the part number comes from. Um, rings RP2 is supplied standard for 6 and 7 pin unless otherwise noted. E4 is step C of the how to order, and I'll show you that in a moment. And then, of course, you can do um, you know separate, different lengths on these as well. Best can do cylinder lengths probably up to six inch who knows you know whatever you wouldn't really ever install this in something so thick but we sure have done very unusual length cylinders in the past okay let's take a look at the other documents there's a product catalog this is the e-series mortise and rim cylinder manual uh, catalog out of their full line book we're dealing with a mortise cylinder housing a 1e 1E mortise cylinder. Here's how to order. 1E is the diameter, 1 and 5 30 second. 3E, that's inch and a half. That's what we would call a jumbo, known by Corbin, PF Corbin or Corbin Russwin as master ring. I've never seen a jumbo size cylinder from Best, but they clearly make them. So the other fun the other cylinder types are here or sizes. This is probably the smaller three-quarter type size. 1E, 7. We're dealing with a 7 pin. Now we're going to get to function code. Look at pages 4 to 5, and that's where we're going to go back to page 5 is where it is. And that's where our lost motion comes in. And they want you to designate E4 on step C to get this. And step C is here, E4. Standard mortise code blank. Okay, so that's the, the D step is the length. We don't want any deviation. We just want what is shown in the catalog. If you recall, it was inch and a quarter effective length, so we left that blank. The cam, well, they called on, on the cut sheet C229. That's where we got our part number from. And then we had asked for the RP3 because that will give you, I think, an eighth. Well, let's just look. Special rate. Let's look at page. Here, they, here it is. An RP3 will get you a 1 8 and a 3 8 They supplied us with a 3 8 and a 3 16 I don't see where just an RP is defined, but they referred to page 9 as well. 
these are cylinder collars and trim rings that are here. That wouldn't apply to what we're doing. It could apply to what you're doing. You might need a cylinder ring or a trim collar for what you're doing. You could be doing something very unusual and you need a large cylinder collar like this. Um, back to our chart. Then the finish. We did 613. Okay. Oil rub bronze. There are more finishes available than they have listed here, but the common one nowadays really is black, but they do the classic finishes as well. Now, there's also a link to installation instructions. This is a generic um, installation instruction for 1E mortise cylinders, and in fact doesn't really apply to this at all. We're dealing with a 1E cylinder, so I can see why, it, why it's put there, but this doesn't apply. Now, there is a document that's really handy. This is a document that I obtained from Best, who was all, uh, who was more than um, gracious to share this with me, showing the different, um, it, it's a cheat sheet is the bottom line. It's a, it's a photocopy of their service manual, which I'll show you where that is, a cheat sheet showing the different types of operations, okay? Different cams that can be done on there as well. So really handy. And that's where the LH comes in because this is the type of operation that we want. Now, I had mentioned the service manual. Let me show you where that is. There is a link below this video here to the manufacturer's page. And when we click on that, that manufacturer's page in our site will load that will allow you to see not only all of the best products that we sell, by means of this horizontal navigation, but also a link to the manufacturer's website, as well as a link to the full product catalog. Now I have right here the E-Series service manual. And if you're dealing with cylinder housings, whatever the derivative or variant of a mortise, rim cylinder, uh, the 5 e series which is the smaller stuff, this is a UL437 version. That's a different rabbit hole to talk about. UL 437 is a UL standard that defines what a cylinder must be subjected and pass to be found compliant with UL 437. It's the most heavy duty, durable um, pick proof, impression proof, uh, physical attack, destructive attack, not, not proof, but, but resistant that's possible. So I happen to be scrolling down here and I saw a lost motion cabinet cylinder. That's a 5E. Let's go up to the 1E, lost motion cabinet cylinder. Let's click on 1E, lost motion cabinet cylinder. And you get into page 2.6. There it is. There's a parts diagram of this cylinder that we're working on. That's just great. Really great that they show that to us. Now, there are some cams as well. Now, let's see if we can find that C229. Okay, here's the sheet. So this shows other cams, cabinet cams, and we did the C229. That's how we specified it. There are other cams here, but they're not all available, and I would refer you back to that in, inside information document regarding what cams you could probably put here. An A04607, a04607. Yeah, that would probably work there as well. Or at least fit onto the lock. It will. I'm 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 not sure why I'm saying it 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 may. It will. Um, the C229 has that limit pin here. That shorter model has that limit pin in the same place. Now, the, old, the, the very interesting thing that came up with this cylinder, we also have a template that I'd like to show you. And the reason I uh, was able to get my hands on this template is, on this project, the client best had a long lead time on this. Um, the year's 2021. We're in the second quarter. It's marked with supply chain residual side effects from, obviously, the abhorrent year 2020. Um, this took... This took six weeks for sure to get, which isn't awful in the world of builder's hardware, but we also live in the Amazonification of our culture world as well. So what's important about this template is this client ordered 25 of these cylinders. Well, they've got 
uh, you know, a couple, a quarter million dollars in woodwork that has to go to the job, and they need to prep the stuff for it to get it moving. This template allows me to be able to tell the client, here's where the holes have to be drilled. The center of the face of where you would drill, I would drill an inch and a quarter hole. You could probably go slightly smaller than that because that's one in five thirty seconds. Um, 1.16 inch. So if you're going to go up to 1.25, I think you'd be in good shape. Actually, let me tell you the OD of the face. Well, you've got those trim rings, and those are going to be far larger. But the OD of this trim head cylinder is 1.315, so 1 in 5 sixteenths. Then you're going to add your trim ring. So 1 in 5 sixteenths is the OD of the head of the cylinder. They're showing you the hex nut ring here. The point is, if the client is going to drill, let's say an inch and a quarter cylinder, maybe um, inch and a quarter, that's four sixteenths, maybe um, seven thirty seconds of an inch, one and seven thirty seconds. Uh, I'm just doing quick math. The center line is here. Then you've got a relocation to the ver to the axis of pivoting of the cylinder, which drives the tailpiece, because the tailpiece, the cam, is not installed in the very center line of the back of the cylinder. We know that from the center line of the face where you would drill a hole inch and a quarter down plus inch and three quarter to the tip of the cam. Let's say that you're going to cut that back three sixteenths of an inch. That flattened area from the dash line down to the tip that is basically five sixteenths. So let's say that you're going to kick that back, you know, well because of how it's splayed you've got some room, you know, meaning what's going to be what was most important for this client because of his constrained space he needed to know from his hole what's the maximum that i have to allow for and then he can judge what his back set should be based on where he wants engagement of the cam over the casework so this is five sixteenths so somewhere in the middle of engagement maybe a back set of two inch uh, one and 13 sixteenths if you've got a good two and a sixteenth clearance I, you know I don't know your application and don't quote my dimensions but just saying it out loud so that you can kind of follow along I suppose now if you use your imagination that's where the double D prep comes in you can certainly see it when we do that just two capital letter D's back to back that's where that comes in very helpful document that's there okay let's wrap up this video on camera if you are enjoying this video, please click thumbs up or like, and also please consider subscribing to our channel. Let's move on to the rest of the video. Okay, in conclusion, a really nice quality cam lock that we have here, or mortise cylinder housing. Uh, lost motion, obviously going to need to lock and unlock your unit. The name Best has been synonymous with small format for a century, literally a century. Um, it was, I think, at some point in the 1960s when their patent ran out. Uh, or that they were challenged, I believe, by Falcon, and they lost that battle to uphold their patent in court. Um, Frank Best, from what I was told by an industry leader in the locksmithing industry, um, who's been in the industry for probably 40 years, he uh, knew... Um, Walter Schlegg's son, Ernie, I think was his name, Ernie Schlegg, or maybe it's Ernie Best. Frank Best and Walter Schlegg both had sons. He knew both of them. He knew for sure uh, that Frank Best was a high school shop teacher and um, must have been a pretty good shop teacher because he started tinkering with cylinders as the way the story was relayed. Uh, because he wanted a single key that would work all of the different things that he would bump into. Whatever thing he needed to stick a key into, he wanted one key to work at all. And somehow he came across the idea of small format. Now, this person who related that story discounts the idea that Frank Best w was an industry person. I don't think he was a locksmith. And he was probably just an extremely mechanically inclined, intelligent individual. But the very concept of the removable core is 
based on two shear lines, a plug shear line and a control lug shear line. Well, that concept of two shear lines existed three decades before that under the name Mastering from P.F. Corbin. I would think in his quest to learn more, everything he could about cylinder construction, he would have bumped into the master ring. And he could have thought about that second shear line as, wait a minute, I can use that another way. And I was told when this story was relayed that he wanted to be able to quickly pull the cylinders out because apparently as he's working on all these locks, he was constantly removing and installing cylinders, which was taking a lot of his time. So that's where he came up with the idea of a control key in out quick, really quick, really quick. And that's what I understand that to be. The whole premise of small format is you have immediately changed rights and privileges over that cylinder by use of that control, control key. You saw how quickly I removed and inserted it, uh, the core from the housing. That's how fast you can make someone's key work and then someone's key, someone key, someone's key not work seconds. That's the whole principle. What's nice about it is you can then collect all your cores after you switch them out. Go back to your shop and then work on them there, not at the door opening. You know, whether it be just master key system maintenance where you're maintaining a lock system or you've got, you know, you've got someone who's fired and they won't give the key back and there's reason to believe that they're going to come back tomorrow and steal the toaster from the break room. I have been personally called by a customer of mine to rekey his locks and I've done that thousands of times and I didn't know this time it was an eviction. The sheriffs were there putting the couch and all of the worldly possessions of the evicted on the curb. So here I am working on these locks while they're coming in and out and this person is being evicted. That's where small format's really great. Switch the cores out, get out of there. Go back to your shop and key it all up. Anyway, enough of a uh, rabbit hole. Any questions on the one EE74 lost motion mortise cylinder housing or any other best product, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you. Again, thank you for watching. And if you've enjoyed this video, please click thumbs up. Please subscribe and maybe even send the video to someone that you know. Thank you.